Faithless Looting survives the March 11th ban, and it turns out we were all wrong. Faithless Looting didn't need to get banned, and the metagame just corrected itself. Just kidding, just kidding. Get pranked, get pranked. Because six days after it could have been banned, Faithless Looting is just everywhere. It's like a disease. A disease that must be cured. When top finishing decks have this many Faithless Lootings in them, it is time to cure the disease with this deck here. And we shall name this masterpiece Big Black Thing. Wait, nope, that's probably a name of a porno. How about Big Black Policeman? Because there's like a big black card here, like it's, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4. It's, it's kind of big, and it's like policing the, you know, the metagame. No? Actually, you know, just forget the name. It, it, it's here to help the metagame. Right now, the metagame feels very fast, very overwhelming, but a lot of these top decks have weaknesses, and that is that a lot of these decks rely on key pieces. If we can take out those key pieces, we can beat them, and this deck here is designed to do just that. And obviously, my first concern with making this deck was how can we take out Arc Like Phoenix decks, which is the number one deck in modern right now and very tough to beat. First of all, we gotta deal with Arc Like Phoenix, which is possible. All we need is a bit of graveyard hate and we can do it. But the real issue is Thing in the Ice, which when it flips, it bounces all non-horror creatures. Arc Like Phoenix, very easy to deal with, but Thing in the Ice, not so much. And like many players, I was distraught over this. How do we deal with Thing in the Ice? And just when I thought there was no hope, while I was in the middle of watching a video of two prostitutes fighting, as one does, I realized, wait a minute, to beat a horror, perhaps it takes another horror. And then I'm like, wait a minute, if we use horror creatures, our opponent's Thing in the Ice can't bounce them to hand. And what's a really good horror creature card? Phyrexian Obliterator, that's right. For four black mana, it's a 5-5 five five that says, when it's dealt damage, the dealing player sacrifices that many permanents. It's really, really good. With so many red decks in the metagame, the easiest way to kill Obliterator would be with things like Lightning Axe or other red removal cards that deal damage. But do they want to sacrifice at least five permanents to do that? I don't think so. So once Obliterator is out, it's a very, very good card. But to make the horror theme better, we have four Thing in the Ices of our own. So when Thing in the Ice flips, it will not bounce our Obliterator. A very kinky strategy, if I do say so myself. So to flip Thing in the Ice, we're going to need a lot of instances of sorceries, which we have. We have four ops, four visions, four thought scours, and a peak. So a lot of card draw. But the card draw does not end there because we have four cremates as well. For one black mana, we draw a card, but we also get to exile a card from a graveyard. Why is that good? Because if our opponent has Arc Like Phoenix, or Dredge card, or anything else valuable in graveyard, we can just swipe it. And who would expect that game one, you know? It is quite nice. And on top of that, we have four fatal pushes for creature removal. But my favorite part of the deck is the Inquisitions and the Thought Seizes. One of the big drawbacks of Arc Like Phoenix decks is that they have no way of protecting their thing in the ice. There is no main deck counter. So Thing in the Ice is very vulnerable and it is at Phoenix deck. But in our deck, because we have Thought Seizes, because we have Inquisitions, we can use them to look through our opponent's hand, make sure the coast is clear for Thing in the Ice and Obliterator, and we can also fire them after Thing in the Ice is out to help flip the thing. In addition, let's say our opponent doesn't have any cards in hand, we can cast a discard spell when Thing has one counter left on it, our opponent's creatures will bounce to hand, and we can grab one of those creatures. This synergy is quite gangster. And speaking of gangster synergy, just like in Phoenix decks, the Thought Scours work really well with Terramander. It is a brand new card from Ravnica Allegiance that says, for one mana, it is a 1-1 one, one flyer that becomes a 5-5. Five, five. The cost for making it a 5-5 five, five is 8 minus the number of instant sorceries in our graveyard. So another great card to finish off our opponent if Thing in the Ice and Obliterator aren't enough to do so. But what is the drawback to this deck? The main thing would probably be the mana. Four black mana is not easy, especially when we have a lot of blue spells in the deck. So in addition to seven fetches, we have three watery graves, four dark slick shores, a swamp, island, and this island is quite problematic because with so much card draw in this deck, by turn four, we are very likely to hit this island, which is why just to be safe, we have Urborg. It turns all lands into play into swamp, and that also includes fetches. It might seem a bit overkill with just one island in the deck, but again, turn four, it's like my mama always says, better to be safe than pregnant. And then there's also one Collective Brutality main deck, but now onto the sideboard. Against Artifact decks and Tron decks, we have two Ceremonious Rejection. Against decks with Instance, we have two Dispels. Against generic non-creature decks, we have two Spell Pierces, as well as two Collective Brutalities. For more non-creature spells, we have two Counter Squalls. And for extra Graveyard Hate, we have Ravenous Trap. For zero mana, we can exile our opponent's graveyard if three or more cards went to the graveyard that turn. And a cool little trick we can do to make sure three cards go to the graveyard is use Thought Scour on our opponent, and that should enable Ravenous Trap. And lastly, we have one Dismember for creature decks. So the question then becomes, with only one card in the sideboard geared for creatures, what happens when we encounter a deck with all creatures? Will we be able to keep up with it? And to that question, I say our number one defense against creature-heavy decks is the power of prayer. But other than prayers, I fingers crossed, because I, I don't know. I mean, we do have the Obliterators, but if the creature deck is a fast creature deck, or the creatures have evasion, then we're kind of screwed. But you know, the, the power of prayer. So get ready to pray, because it is time for that gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And without further ado, here's the gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand is pretty gangster, so we will keep. We shall start with Thoughtseize, and ooh, it's Dredge. So we shall take the looting, and then pass back. I'm gonna place that tap, passes back. Back in our turns, go a thing in the ice, and then pass back. Run a dark blast to get the Dredge. Stinkweed Amp, okay. But if their stuff does come back, we have a thing in the ice that flips them back to hand. Ooh, this is so dirty. What's well, cremate? The opponent is probably like, what the heck's going on? Nah. 
Nah. And I'll finish things up with an opt and visions. If we can hit one more black mana source, we can play the obliterators. That would be pretty kinky. Also pull Terramander. So we have our fourth land. We'll bottom these, try and hit another instant of sorcery. And then back to our opponent. Oh, it flashes back the looting. Prize amalgam and a stinkweed. Okay. And that's not an instant or sorcery. Okay, might as well go with the obliterator. And it could work out also because if we keep this loaded, if they do happen to get their creatures back, we can just flip them back to hand. And their creatures will come into play. And then we have some hot lesbian action. Interesting, interesting. So it'd be really nice if we can hit an instant or sorcery here. Come on. Oh, that's lame. It's probably safe to swing in with this, but to be extra safe, I'm just going to play a second one, hold back, just in case they have Conflog Law, and then back to them. Actually, if they have Conflog Law, I think they have it no matter what, but it looks like they don't. Oh, it swings for two. Okay, come on, please. Instant or sorcery. There's so many in this deck. Okay, that'll do. We shall thought seize. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. I guess just take uh, Life from the Loam. Swing for 12. Play the Terramander. Buff the Terramander. And now back to our opponent, which is ease. Oh, no. They hit it. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. Thought we dodged that one all right we should have gotten that one. Oh, we're so close all right whatever yolo was the kid say so going on in the game too and dump the thought seizes an inquisition and one fatal push because discarding is pretty bad against them i'm going to put in some graveyard hate and two collected brutalities for life game at the very least and with that let's go to game two opening hand we have a cremate so we will keep start things off with visions and ooh, thing in the ice and on top back to our opponent i'm gonna go spade the saluting rise amalgam and golgari well we kind of need to take care of that so they can't dredge next turn yeah that's unfortunate and then might as well play a visions to set up for some good stuff hopefully and and bottom top and back to opponent another faithless looting but no dredge cards yet another faithless looting okay still no dredge but they do have blood gas and amalgam i think he's got to live with that though all right let's go thing in the ice and might as well thought scour now and back to opponent and a fourth faithless looting okay Okay. another blood gas lightning axe okay at least we have the obliterator to back it up and we also have a fatal push cool okay okay let's play the obliterator and pass back oh it flashes back faithless looting now they have a sync we for dredge and nice another obliterator so let's be aggressive here swing in for five and then play the other obliterator and if we really need to you can fetch and then fatal push something but i don't think we'll need that oh it flashes back faithless looting and now we're looking really good because we have lethal <laughs> okay revolt kill that hoe and with 10 damage swinging in that will be the win so we're going to game three game three of the Hand's not bad, but we also don't have graveyard hate, but eh, we'll keep it. On it goes, faith is loading. Golgarian prize amalgam. If you want some graveyard hate would be nice here. Meh. We can still try and hit it. I don't know. I think the safer option here is go vision instead of op. And neither one of these cards is what we're looking for. All right, back to our opponent. So now two prize amalgams. Opponent dumps that. Hmm, interesting. But they're out of dredge. So we might have a shot here. Yes, there's hope. There is hope. And on top of that, we could thought scour them, put two cards in graveyard, fire this if they fetch even. No, we got we gotta be careful on this timing here. We gotta wait till they at least six expect it okay go vision thing in the ice yeah and then back to our opponent could fire it now but we shall wait on it flashes back like this looting blood gas and graveyard i mean maybe we do it now or maybe we do it next turn next turn so a thing in the ice yeah could be a bit risky okay let's hopefully get away with this thing in the ice and back to our opponent Bulgari, they whiff on us this looting yep they're trying to hit a land and there's a land Ooh, hoping it wouldn't be a fetch Urgh. okay wait now i gotta think about this that should be okay let's thought scour they're gonna cremate nice and now let's go ravenous trap in response they'll fetch get the blood gas back but by next turn we can flip this and inquisition as well okay let's take a look at their hand before we inquisition them yeah not really anything there we could take the creeping chill actually which is kind of dumb ah whatever we'll do it collective brutality blood gas back to hand take creeping chill swing for seven and then back to them and there's the match oh that made me feel good in ponds oh man the cremate is so cool it's like main deck like they don't expect that we must play more more so on to the next one opening hand we can turn one inquisition and follow up with thing in the ice so we shall keep and it looks like we have a ghetto death shadow deck with three thought seizes this shall be difficult what do we even take no matter what we take we're getting thought seize next turn we could take looting but they can just flash it back let's just take a thought seize so much for thing in the ice and thought seize it is now thing in the ice is with jesus back on our turn might as well thought scour we have an inquisition yeah i'll fire it and they only have a blue black here one land take thought seize the next turn they'll thought scour yeah that seems right and then back to our opponent opponent thought scours and there's the other land back on our turn pull land let's go peek dismember now and then pass back it almost feels like the mirror matchup we kind of have similar deck they dump team or battle rage back on our turn Charmander will take it even though they can just kill it i mean is it safer in hand or out we have to discard them twice before until the creature removal is gone yeah it was forced out of them back to our opponent fatal push oh it passes back another land back to our opponent oh it flashes back fatal floating nothing's happening another fatal push oh it fires inquisition to take our fatal push i want something oh full inquisition might as well seven denial and this Member. Take this member. Back to our opponent. Opponent ops. Hobble. And finally, we pulled Terramander. So perhaps there's hope after all. Opponent plays Angler. But at this rate, we can outspeed them. So we shall swing for five. They get a five back to them. And we get the win. And 
that only took nine turns. Who knew Death Shadow could go nine turns? Hopefully that wasn't too painful. So going into game two, I'm bringing a Dismember and a Spell Pierce and swap out a Collective Brutality and a Peek. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, they're probably going to discard us turn one, but we can discard them back if they don't take that. And we'll have the Terramander for later. We have that to set up for Terramander. Yeah, we'll keep on it. Thought seizes us. Taking our Inquisition. Back in our turn, Water Grave. Pass back on a Cycle Street Wraith. Ooh, do they have the Shadow? I'll scour. Mm, maybe an Angler. Angler it is. That's going to be pretty tough to beat. I suppose the best we can hope for is Terramander and then pass back. Conant Thought sees us, takes the op, not the scours. Interesting. Conant swings for five. Shadow. Man, they really got to make a move here. Uh, scour. Obliterator. Okay. I still think they have Fatal Push. Let's see. So let's Thought Scour. We can pay one for that. It's a 5-5. Five, five. We'll hold back with it. But if they have Fatal Push, we'll, yep, they got us. Assuming they can pump us by one. Conant swings. Ooh, we go to one. Either way, they have lethal. So we're going to game three. Game three. I think we can keep this because for once we're on the play, so we'll be able to Thought Seize them before they Thought Seize us. Thought Seize. Interesting. Interesting. The Snapcaster comes out. We can cremate whatever it targets. So what is the threat here? Maybe even the Jace. Kind of an odd card for a Death Shadow deck, though. Yeah, I suppose we just take the Jace and pass back. When it passes back, Thought Scour. Might as well Thought Scour ourselves. Ooh, an Inquisition. We just do this until we get to Obliterator. Yeah, Inquisition. And another odd choice, but we'll be taking that. All right, back to front. Final Ops. Oh, what a ho. So I take the Obliterator. Meh. But I pull Terramander. That's not too bad. But only three instant sorceries in Graveyard. I suppose best move here. Thought Seize. Ooh, look how dirty they were. So close to playing it. But too bad. Now play Terramander and cremate in response to Snapcaster if it comes down to it. On oh, no, ops. Dude, we might have to cremate. <sighs> this is tricky here. Yeah, because they're waiting to use Snapcaster. I mean, the problem is to activate this, it costs four. If we cremate now, we can make this a 5 5 by next turn, but they'll be able to use Snapcaster for op or Thought Seize back on their turn. Yeah, okay, it's kind of lame. Might as well just take the Thought Seize and Spell Pierce. Okay, that actually works out. So we'll activate this on ops. Yeah, I thought they would use Snapcaster, but okay. Okay, we sync for five. Pass back to opponent. Oh, these so dirty. I was trying to bounce and return Death Shadow. Yeah, a lot of Death Shadow decks have been running that in the sideboard lately. One copy of. Pretty smart. Had to slow them down. Let's spell pierce so they can't play the shadow this turn. And a thing in the ice. Cool. It's gonna cost two to activate that, but let's just go thing in the ice here so that way we can chump the shadow if needed. Not this turn, but it'll be ready for the following turn. I don't expect a bolt from them. Looks like they could snap caster that. Ugh, this is a sorcery, so they'll have to do that now. Yeah, they could snap caster, death shadow. Dang. Drop down the two, play the shadow, snap caster, and bounce, it seems. Yep, getting back the Jace. Oh, nice. That makes things very convenient. Let's do it now. Boom. And then boom, boom, and back to our opponent. Oh, and there's the match. Yay. I didn't think we were gonna get that one. I mean, it was a lot of back and forth. We It felt like the same deck. Like, it felt like it was the mirror match. It's like, they have Shadow, we have Terramander, and they have Anglers when we have Obliterator. So it was pretty interesting. But now on to the next one. Opening hand, two Obliterators. I mean, we could keep it. That's a lot of late game stuff. Mm. Eh, we'll keep it just for fun. But if they're a fast deck, we screwed. A lot of hand. And back to us. Let's go. Visions. Ooh, we have a Tomb here for this, but I don't want to help them out or anything. So I suppose bottom, top, and back to our But it looks like it's Odd Nauseam. Yeah. So we must make haste, big boys. Let's op. Hopefully hit a Thought Seize or something. No. No. Then maybe we set up for a Thought Seize. Inquisition. I suppose so. And back to Fauna. Phyrexian on live. We need that Inquisition that turn. Whatever, YOLO. Shoot. And there's Ad Nauseam. All right, got one shot at this. We gotta hit that Thought Seize. That's not Thought Seize. So we're going to game two. Going to game two. We're gonna dump the Fatal Push of the Cremate. So put in a bunch of anti non creature stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, a lot of discarding stuff. So we shall keep. Oh, oh, we dead. Well, the one combo deck we can't get. Oh, uh, do we even bother? I guess we could spell pierce it. Yeah. So they spell pierce it back to us. I mean, it was like a uh, uh, thought scar. Well, yeah, but I refuse to concede this one. We'll play it out. In the meantime, we can have story time. What's a good story to tell? Ooh, I got one. I got one. There was one time when I was younger, I was eating at a restaurant with my family and one of my crusty old relatives, she had like a memory issue where she could remember old memories, but couldn't remember new memories very well. And so a lot of times she'd repeat herself. So in the middle of this dinner with all the family members there and all these people around us she just randomly looks at me and shouts your great grandfather and your great grandmother were cousins and nobody had ever told me this before so of course i'm like wait what you're saying i'm inbred so i was shocked right but because she had memory issues literally five minutes later while i was still processing the idea that i was inbred she looks at me again and she's like your great grandmother and your great grandfather were cousins the exact same thing and the first time nobody else in the restaurant looked at us but this time people started to look and it just made the processing so much harder because like at first it's like maybe she's just crazy right but the fact she said it again th that meant she was telling the truth and again three minutes later what do you think she does she says the exact same thing equally loud that time and it just the more she said it the more people looked and it was just a, not a good day 
like to find out that you're inbred and have someone keep reminding you every few minutes in front of all these people who are learning with you that you are inbred and watching the terror on your face when you're like wait a minute if i'm inbred what does that mean like it explains so much so by the end of that dinner at least eight times she shouted out that i was inbred in front of everyone because she's like also kind of deaf too so she shouted it pretty loud loud enough where most of the restaurant could hear so of course i asked my parents about it after i'm like why am i inbred and they're like oh it's just a family tradition of ours that the pinnacle of relationship is marrying your first cousin and i just couldn't look at myself the same way knowing that i was inbred like i thought only hillbillies were inbred up oh, matches over all right on to the next one opening hand could be a lot stronger but we do have a vision so we will keep bottom the terramander but keep inquisition on top and pass back oh uh, it's probably artifact prison yeah no wait what or not not artifact prison hmm i suppose we'll see what's in store Ooh, and it looks like spirits that could actually be pretty tough for us because i can keep swinging despite the obliterator being out i suppose just take the captain and then terramander and then pass back another vial noble and opponent passes back so what to do i guess op oh okay at uh, top and then opt again oh yeah we can keep that on top yes 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 i'm tempted to fatal push but double spirit in hand for next turn might be a better target yeah okay swing for one back to our opponent but will they play both yeah okay opponent swings for two do we try and fatal push that because next turn just turn that into a five five yeah let's see if they take out the selfless spirit for that because they'd probably be tempted to yeah come on do it do it oh they, they just let it die all right well then that could come back to bite us but might as well peek at their empty hand and then make into a big boy do we hold it back as a blocker and rely on this no i suppose you should be the aggressor here swing for five opponent takes five back to them opponent pulls the land swing for five you go big boy and then back on our turn swing for five 13 to six but we're gonna follow up with the obliterator <laughs> back to opponent i mean we can't really block with it but we'll be pushing lethal next turn with both so i'll have to hold back to block oh wait what is this oh i thought they're gonna exile something that's just fine that's just fine opponent swings for three okay and ooh collective brutality that might be able to finish them let's see swinging with both uh, the, the, the trample uh, they they block but the trample oh they got us they sacked it and to that i say hooray for illiteracy so i go on to game two we're gonna jump the cremate or dismember anti collective brutality and with that let's go to game two opening hand we can turn one turn two so we shall keep one plus land now let's inquisition interesting interesting all of them are problems but i think path to exile is the most pressing problem so we'll take the path and pass back when it plays a tap passes back we shall go a thing in the ice although they could just exile it though but we could kill it at some point yeah okay best move here let's go thought seize. oh my god on. Okay, we'll take the path. Play the Terramander to protect this guy. And then pass back. I'm gonna pass back to us. We'll get a land. Because of Unified Will, let's just go with the Obliterator because we need to have at least one creature out to tie them for number of creatures. Okay, they go to 16. Back to them. Opponent draws the Horizon Canopy. Play Supreme Phantom. And then passes back. Well, I say we Thought Scour. Try and fire off Terramander. Four things in Graveyard. Let's go. Visions. Bottom two lands. Thing in the ice as well. But for now, we make this guy into a 5 5. Swing for 10. They go to 6. Back to them. And there's the Concede. I don't think we have that great of a matchup against Spirits. Because if we're on the defense of this card, is isn't that great because their creatures can just evade it so maybe we got a bit lucky there but a win is a win so now on to the next match opening hand could be all right so we'll keep start off with inquisition Ooh, it's affinity i'm gonna call it right now and just say we're probably gonna lose i mean their hand isn't that great but a fast aggro deck like affinity i don't know well we'll take the vault scourge and pass back and if we bounce everything to hand with thing in the ice it's like all their stuff costs zero or one speaking of which there's that so we shall play it and pass back back on their turn they swing in we take it back to us uh, we can't really thought see so op mm, nope bottom cremate nails thought scour all righty we may have to start lubing up our buttholes mm. Terramander, okay that helps maybe it's too soon for the lube because actually we could go visions bottom bottom and then watch this thought sees that will trigger this bounce to hand take this signal pass swing four seven and back to our opponent the opponent's gonna refire everything and what the what hell is shit more enforcer that card's for losers no oh, whatever so visions will be the seventh in graveyard we can play that this turn hopefully set up for that next turn might as well cremate thing in the eyes okay play terramander and we'll hold back for now at least they can say they're an actual affinity deck though interesting interesting i sense a problem here what if they have galvanic blast before damage regardless of whether or not we block here I and mean, if they have galvanic blast they win either way all right let it go through i knew it i knew we needed the lube all right so gone on the game two i dump the thought season one inquisition the put on dismember two clock brutalities and two ceremonious rejections and with that let's go to game two opening hand could be better so we'll mull i'll just have to make it work it's not better at all so we'll peek at their hand i mean uh, sure and back to our opponent oh good another lamb we needed that one hopefully we still have some lube 
cube left over from before. Back in our turn, just play the thing in the ice and pass back. Oh god, their deck's so bad they're playing unknown shores. And we're probably gonna lose to it. Oh, oh wait, I, I could have blocked. Oopsies. Uh, 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 just forget that happened. Uh, cremate our own thing, unfortunately. I feel like the voice of doom today. On that note, we're all gonna die someday. Anyway, blocks like that. Back to us. Now we play the obliterator. That's one good thing to be happy about. And then back to our opponent. Things with these two, yeah. And anyway, back on our turn, thought scour. Ooh, ooh, an opt. Bottom. Ooh. We might actually get this one because we can do this. Drain them for two. Swing in for 12. And then play Terramander. So it's actually looking very, very good for us. I mean, you can't blame me for doubting this deck because, like, I imagine this deck won't do very well against aggro deck. So when we see an aggro deck, it's like, you know, you got to expect the worst. Game three, no change to sideboard. I guess we'll keep this. Yeah, we'll keep. Opponent plays Memmite, but then passes back. Interesting, interesting. Could fail to push it, but I think the better move here, Visions. Bottom both of these. And pass back. Opponent swings for one and passes back. Ooh, we might get this one. We shall play thing in the ice. Pass back. Ornithopter. Opponent swings for one. Uh, block. Back on our turn. Another fatal push. Might as well. And then visions. Yep. Both of those on top. And then pass back. Master of Ethereum. Sure. Opponent swings for one. No block. Pull that land. Can't kill that this turn. We could flip this though. Perhaps on our opponent's turn. And another one. Whatever shall we do? Oh no. Okay. Let's cremate. Followed by Optum. And then turn. Might as well thought scour again. All right. I mean, the deck's working. And I kind of feel bad for doubting it in this matchup. Opponent goes to one. Let's Inquisition. Pick that. And then visions. No collective brutality. And we could fetch revolt hit if we need to, but I don't even think we need to. And our opponent concedes. I mean, I don't know. So here's the thing. I don't know about these results. Like, we happen to play some of our best matchups in all the decks that we were weak against, like heavy creature deck or super fast aggro decks. We didn't see it all. So it's hard to gauge how good this deck is because right now it's looking really good, but I have my doubts about the deck. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the gameplay here, but I'm going to keep playing the deck to see what the win percentage is because I never want to mislead anyone about a deck. And I don't really feel like the gameplay we saw was the most reflective of what the deck is. So I'll let you know how the matches go. Hello, big boys. Daddy here from the future. And after 21 matches with this deck, I have the results. Out of 21 matches, the deck had 10 wins and 11 losses. So it was about 50-50. Not surprisingly, against any kind of combo-ish deck that relies on key pieces like Hollow One, Tron, decks like that, this deck did really, really well. All the thought seizes, all the discarding, very good against those kind of decks. But against creature-heavy decks, we did not do well. There was a Merfolk matchup. Oh, it was bad. They had Harbinger of the Ties that kept bouncing our creatures. And they also had Island Walk, so they kept going past the Obliterator. It was bad. Be glad you didn't see that match. There was also a black white Eldrazi and Taxes matchup, and that was also quite atrocious. They had Path to Exile, they had a lot of removal, and they were able to hit our key pieces like Thing in the Ice, Brexit, and Obliterator, and without those pieces, we just can't really win. And then there were random matches that we could have won, but sometimes we got flooded, or we didn't draw any lands, because lands in this deck are a little bit odd, because we only have 19 lands in the deck, but with so much drawing, once the drawing gets going, it seems like we have a lot of lands, and if we don't have any draw cards, then getting off the ground can be tough. So consistency wise, the deck was a little bit lacking, but the main problem was just creature decks. The deck was so bad against creature decks that it even lost to a werewolf deck. Who would have thought? Oh, and also, any kind of prison deck this deck did not do well against. If they had Chalice of the Void, we were screwed. If they had Blood Moon, we were hella screwed. And if they had Ensnaring Bridge, we were most definitely screwed. So, in conclusion, against Graveyard decks, we do very well. Against Combo decks, we do really well. Against any of the top played decks right now, this deck does very well. But against everything else, not so much. But I enjoyed the deck, and I hope you did as well. But that is all for now. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, be sure to subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments because I do read every comment. But that wraps up this video, and as always, I hope you have a great day.